replay from Mark Larkham's in car camera at look the start. Look at Lounsey, look at that. That was a brilliant start. That's plenty of traction uh, off the grid and uh, also Larry coming up there as well. Now the big drag race up Mountain Straight. Oh, look at that. That's quite incredible. That's quite an incredible sight. We haven't seen that for many, many years. A full grid at Mount Panorama. It's Paul Radisic, the fast man of the Shell team, is going to lead them up the hill for the first time. Great start for Shell 18 Ford. Dick Johnson got away to a great start also in the number 17 Shell Helix Ford as the full field scream up on top of the mountain. Wait till you hear the crowd cheer. Up through the board cutting for the first time. Looks like a relatively clean start to the race. Everyone knows they've got 161 laps to go. Listen to the fans roar as this big field comes across the top. How true it is, nothing shakes them out like V8 supercars. There's 55 of them in battle mode. First lap of the FAI 1000 for 1999. Paul Radisic, classic battle between Ford and Holm as he leads them down to the Forest Elbow for the first time. We can be proud because this is the best touring car series in the world. There's no, no doubt, doubt about, about that, that Barry. No doubt about that. Wayne Gardner, there's already a challenge on here. It looks like Mark Scape and the Pertec Ford of Jason Bright as they come thundering down off the hill, off the mountain. Mark and it's a drag race on here. And Dick Johnson is in the slipstream nicely as well. His teammate Paul Radisic leads the way. Bright will have the inside run through challenge chase. This is anxious stuff on the opening lap. That's Beautifully positioned on the inside. It's a bit cut and thrust for the first lap, isn't it? Yep, 1,000 kilometre sprint race. I know it's an enduro, but these guys attack it like a championship round. Oh, Dick DJ, Johnson yes. has a big look down Got the inside. Uh, Not quite close oh, enough. Very close. Tucks in behind the Pertec Falcon. Make some dramas at the bottom part of the circuit. Let's check that out on the replay. Whoa, might have got a little bit of a tap there. Oh, hit the wall as well. Oh, no, that is the Paul Dumbrell Matthew White entry. Paul Dumbrell. We've seen him race in Formula Holdens this year. He is the youngest driver That's to ever fire, race at Mount Panorama as Paul fire. scrambles out of the car. That's at McPhillamy Park. He closes the door. Yeah, it's um, He's given two that. things. If it's uh, one thing, the doors could be sticking out and someone can whack it. So, oh, dear, he's giving himself a whack. Yeah, he's get hit, that hole, hit that wall very, very hard. hard. You can see the damage. Let's have a look on the shell replay. Oh, he's already oh, hit he's the already wall there. Done it. Looks like uh, memories of Craig Lowndes' accident there two years ago when he got offline, got out of the Oh, look, look, look at the diff at the back of it. Yeah, rear axle's it's broken. really given a major, mm. major wallop there. Marshall's on the spot to make sure he's OK, but I think he's just had the stuffing knocked out of him more than anything. Pace car out after 13 laps of the FAI 1000. We're back under full green racing conditions. Oh, oh that's the trouble you have when you're picking your way through the slower traffic. John Trimble just putting a little bit of a squeeze on the mobile holder racing team Commodore, but Paul Radisic sprinting away like a scalded cat as he has done since the start of this race. 16 laps in. There was all sorts of drama. Jason Bright trying to get out of the pits and almost run into another car. Now there were air hoses stuck into the car. And look at that, it pulled the whole fuel rig and gantry with it. The team working frantically to try and get Jason Bright clear. But that is a very, very dramatic moment in the pit lane. Even oh, worse, oh, Daniel no. Miller and Jeff Kendrick. That's at speed stick corner at the top of Mountain Straight. And that's in a very precarious position. And there's debris across the road also on the clear side. So they continue to tumble. We're going to watch the starter's flag and see if a safety car is scheduled to come out again. That is a very dangerous place. Let's have a look on the Shell Helix replay. What's happening? Oh, I'm not sure whether they've got a nudge or he's just lost it, but he's crunched the wall big time. And both Holden Racing Team cars coming in also, and John Bow and Glenn Seaton. Oh, it's going to be crowded oh, in here. This is a busy time. Cameron McConville standing by. Lounds out of the car. McConville in time so important look at Barguana squeezing the Valvoline car past the two mobile one cars this is Radisic race leader Stephen Ellery climbing in very oh, tall hectic time FTR Falcon in two there it is the number five car 
Greg Rust is on the spot. This is absolutely frantic down here at the moment. There are cars absolutely everywhere, jam-packed in the pit lane. Glenn Seaton is out of the Ford Tickford Racing Falcon. Neil Crompton strapping in. The clock's been running 13 seconds so far. Fresh set of tyres going on and 120 litres of fuel. The team's other car, Bates and Brabham, settling in. Brabham out of the car. Neil Bates in. The Holden Racing Team Commodores have, Commodores have been in. So too is um, Jason Barguana. He swapped over with Garth Tander. They're going back out. Faulkner in. Faulkner's out of the car and Scott Will's now into the car. It's all happening down here. It, oh! Welcome back to Mount Panorama. That's Garth Tander and I think Thomas Mazira have come together. Well, Mark Osley, you had a theory on this because just a moment ago you made a comment about the back of Mazira's car. Well, I've just been watching it the last few laps, Bill. See that big oil stain on the rear bumper? Oh, been watching no. that car running around the lead pack. There's been a big dark oil stain building up under Mazira's car like it was pumping out a bit of oil. And I saw on Greg Murphy's car the screen was splattered in oil spray. So maybe, I don't know, but it looks like Mazira's car may have been pumping out some oil. Oh, maybe no. he's dumped a big load, I don't know, but both is, cars out of the race. Here's your shell replay on the screen. Thomas Mazira turning all by himself. Oh, how lucky was... Oh, oh that how, was unlucky right there. No, but how lucky was Baird to sneak yeah. through on the inside in the Pertec car. That's the number 34, Valvoline Cummins, Commodore Garth Tander steering it, and you can see the extensive oh. damage. Thomas running backwards down into Forest Elbow. Talking about life was pretty easy. It's not too easy for Stephen Ellery at the moment because Cameron McConville is doing a superb job in the number one, mobile one, Holden Racing Team Commodore. He's sitting second, he's got Greg Murphy breathing right down his throat, and he is applying the pressure to Stephen Ellery. It's hard going though in a straight line. Plenty of run on board the number 18 Shell Helix Ford. We've got the second Shell car back in fourth, and this is a very strong showing from that team. Oh, he got, he got turned around. Absolutely clobbered. What was that car? Just trying to pick up who it was, it was a white uh, VS Commodore, I think it was. He got nailed. Innocent victim in that, Dean Canto and Wayne Wakefield. Well. Well, it was... Well, I imagine there's a very disappointed Wayne Wakefield down in the pits. He's with our own Greg Rust. Wayne, tell us what's happened there. A lot of uh, very, uh, very disappointed faces down here. Yeah, Rusty, it's uh, pretty devastating, mate. Um... Poor old Dino's minding his own business and someone's given him a whack up the uh, backside and turned him around into the wall, so looks like that's the end of us for today. But uh, the car was going really well. We had a little bit of a problem from the start, but... Um, now we're, we're getting reports just now that the car is in fact on fire. Dean is at least out of the car, which is good news, but the car's on fire. No worries. OK. Well, it is a big worry, I think. <laughs> it is a worry. Hopefully they can put it out. <laughs> Listen, that's, uh, that's a real shame for you. You put together a really good package, and Dean was a terrific co-driver as well. It was looking yeah. good for you. Yeah, mate, well, we had one of the quickest combinations of privateers, and we're looking for a good result here today, but uh, I guess we'll have to pack up and come again next year. Chin up. Right on, mate. Green flag, full race conditions in the FAI 1000, this fascinating race, an absorbing contest as it continues to unfold on Mount Panorama. There's one thing we can tell you for sure though, Stephen Ellery is leading this race. This is David Brabham in a very serious incident, very fast. Uh, let's have a look at this from another angle. Oh, what happened there? Rear oh. tyre, rear tyre. He almost got airborne. See the amount of air that went under the car? Could have taken off like an aircraft. Yeah, no, it looks like the rear tyre's just let go there. He's yeah. just turned into the chase. I mean, you're doing 280 odd k's an hour oh. at that point. And she's let go, ugly. That is a frightening ride. Hey, now look at this, Cameron McConville getting squeezed by Ellery and Steve Johnson. You'll see the car's uh, moved a fair bit across the top here, wouldn't you? Under the pace car situation, you're going so slow that the tyre cools down a hell of a lot. And the two mobile cars running very, very well. They're absolutely hauling, aren't they? Yeah, I followed, uh, I followed Dick onto the straight there a couple of times and thought, oh, well, this would be interesting. <laughs> Better get a toe off this one to try and catch him. But, um, yeah, I mean, they've obviously got their package right this weekend. The two cars look like they're running very, very strongly. And uh, yeah, although it's uh, not even halfway yet, so wait and see what happens. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know if anyone had money on the uh, safety car, but um, he's going to do just about as many laps as the race winner by the time this is over. This is incredible, isn't it? We thought in 1997 there was a high attrition rate. This is just off the wall. Simon Wills is OK, though. From where we can see, he's on his feet and talking to the marshals, which is a good sign. And 
be very disappointed, and so too with John Faulkner back down in the pits. War on the mountain, FAI 1099. Stephen Richards leads the race. Paul Radisic on a charge. He put in a 2.12 to sweep through the placings. He's now back to a 2.15, so he's settled it down in second place ahead of Craig Lowndes, Mark Scaife, Mark Noski, Jason Wright. Glenn Seaton going backwards with two consecutive 2.16s. And this even slower from the Cat Racing team, John Bow limping back to the pits. After looking so strong and hovering around in that top ten all morning, the Cat team has come to grief. There was smoke billowing from the back of the car, you would suspect they've lost an engine. Race leader Stephen Richards is being hauled in just unbelievably fast by Paul Radisic. Isn't he getting hauled in? Look at the lap times. He just dropped into the 12s. Radisic did a 12.9 before. He's just done a 13.8. Richards a 15-5, so the Shell Ford absolutely hammering, looking, absolutely catching him hand over fist. He'll be right on him in a few laps at this rate. And the wins VT Commodore leading the Shell Helix AU Falcon. Look at Radisic now as he's in the draft. He pulls out of the draft now, heading up towards speed stick turn. He's got the inside run and the rat. Paul Radisic moves through on the inside and takes back the lead of the FAI 1000. Tyres may be getting way on the two. Oh no! Stephen Johnson spun it. Going for an inside move on the number two mobile Commodore. Manages to keep it out of the sand. But a rush of blood there coming into the chase. Well, what can you say, John Bow? And look who is coming right up behind him. This is Neil Crompton in the number four, five, Ford Tickford Racing AU. Crompton will pounce immediately. This is the battle for fifth and sixth. This will be interesting, guys. Look at this. Radisic. Oh, right on the what map. hit the fence behind there? Was that McLean? That might be the safety car period. Let's see what happened back there. Looked like just coming through Reed Park. Yes, yes. it was. Llewellyn and McLean, they are out. Just saw out of the corner of my eye that car clouding the wall big time. Well, is this the safety car or is that car considered safe on the inside of the circuit? We'll be watching the starting actually, officials very uh, closely. Well, his 99 Bathurst campaign is over. In Cameron's defence, he has been suffering a leaking differential for the last few laps. I wonder if that dumped a whole lot of oil on his back tyres, John. Now, oh, oh, he's, he's blown a tyre. Radisic has blown a tyre. Oh, no. No, this is race leader Paul Radisic. Oh. Front right has blown. Well, you can hear the Holton fans are going crazy along pit straight. They can see it on the big giant screens here. The problem with this as well, of course, is that that flapping rubber is liable to do a lot of damage. I had a uh, flat tire at the Grand Prix one year and drove it back to the pits and it took out the shock absorber. So, 20 so. laps from home and the luck is with you. The luck is with you. He's having trouble even turning the corner. The Holden oh, fans no. are going ballistic and that is cruel luck for the Shell team. And the pressure's on here on the pit crew too to get this done as fast as possible. Look at that front guard, oh. it now starts to lift. Let's hope he can turn through the corner. He's got to take a slightly air. His car's not turning through the corner. Oh. Now he's damaged the front. It's ripped the front off it as well now. That's, oh. that is, she's all over, unfortunately. What a what a shocking stroke of luck. Well, Those guys in that team, they, I know what they like. They're very dedicated and they would have worked so hard for this. What a They've gun. had a pretty ordinary year. What a gut-wrenching moment, Barry Sheen. Yeah, yeah, oh boy, it's done a major amount of damage. It's, oh, OK, luckily enough, they got the thing off all right. The, the, the thing in the centre of the hub that locks the wheel on is broken. So is he going to be, yeah, then get that back on. I'm looking at the thread. The thread looks pretty good. But, I, yeah, the thread looks OK on it. So front mud guard doesn't, yeah, they're just pulling it out off the, I reckon he can go. Yeah. Oh, what a pain in the backside. What well, a shame. That is one of the most gut-wrenching moments I think I've ever seen. The Mount Panorama, 20 laps to go. This team has looked so strong, has led so many laps. It's oh. all over for the 18 Ford. Paul Radisic, his day, his FAI 1000, after being so strong and leading for so long, it is all over. You cannot believe how you can go from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows in such a short time frame. The car's been pushed all day. They've worked the very hard, and the team has worked so hard to get them in that position. Oh, and, well, he's uh, going to make himself someone's, comfortable. Someone's brought a chair down for him. He deserves it, too. He's worked so hard. Oh, I think it's broken. <laughs>
it's broken just settled, like man. the car. It is still Richards and Murphy leading the way from Lowndes, Scaife, Seaton is going strong in fourth from Dick Johnson. The Young Lions, what a standout performance from Ingle and Paul Wheel and Greg Crick running in that top eight. Ninth is Longhurst and Adam Macro. Radisic and Ellery in tenth, but as you've just seen, they are out. Well, this is what it comes down to for Paul Radisic. Forever a sense of humour for this great driver. What an effort. Nobody knows this track like Stephen Richards. What an extraordinary success rate he and his dad have around this 6.2 kilometre circuit. You're watching the crossed fingers of Angela Richards. That's Stephen's wife. Stephen Richards, he knows what this feels like. He did it last year and he gets the last lap board. He is now on his way home. We were giving you some historical statistics before to say that the last man, the last driver to go back to back wins here at Bathurst was Jim Richards, Stephen's father. Well, Stephen has gone one better. He is the first driver to ever win here on the mountain in a Holden and a Ford. And he has done it in back to back years. Down Conrad Strait for the final time. Coming down under the Dunlop Bridge for the final time, Stephen Richards will do it back to back in the wins, Commodore. Unbelievable stuff, the two Kiwis do it. Stephen Richards, Greg Murphy win the FAI 1000. Yes! Woo! There is Greg. Two times a winner. And so too is Stephen. Fantastic.